Sonic, and I work on another series called Hatsune Miku. Anyone? Mm -hmm. know what I'm uh, we actually have that game here and play it down below in the free play area if you guys want to see it. Uh, and I've been at Sega now for about six years. So to kind of set you guys up as to how, how it was I, I came to Sega, when I was a kid, right, I remember very distinctly being on the elementary school playground and being in one of those heated discussions. Uh, and you guys know what this was about if you were a 90s kid. Where then one kid's like, no oh, man, Super Nintendo's the way to go. <laughs> and you're like, no, no. No, it's, it's about the Sega Genesis, man. It's the Sega Genesis. Because the Genesis does what Nintendo does. It's got the most processing. Oh, I know what it means! They're going to cut me off, which means I'm just going to scream to you guys for the next 30 seconds, okay? Alright, and then they're going to get me out of your way. So, I guess that's it. Alright, I'm waiting for them. Okay, so we're gonna do this old school style. That's good with you guys. Right. Yeah. yeah! For about 20 seconds at least. Okay. So who here was a Genesis kid on the playground? Right. Woo! Woo! Right on. And, and no shame. Who was a Super Nintendo kid on the playground too? Respect that. Respect that. Yeah. Uh, so this is this is 
Oh, that was our slide about Sonic 06. <laughs> <laughs> Kansas. And then it just like it just goes on like that. So is it Texas? Is it Florida? Florida. 
You just answered one, so let's get someone else and have some answers. Anyone know who it was in Two Sonic? In the back, in the blue, yep. Yeah? Yuji Naka. He says, actually, it's not Yuji Naka. Patrick, do you know this? I know, I know you know, man. <laughs> you're helping me out today. You're, you're from a Sega fan site, which means you're going to know all of these. Yeah, I know. Pretty much, I'll, I'll yeah. I'll test you later. Okay. Anyone else know? Anyone else know? All right, let's hear it. Okay, uh... Oh, don't feel me now, Okay, okay. Uh, oh, Oishima. Oh, 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 Oshima. Uh, oh, Oshima. Oh, Oshima. Oh, yeah. Uh, now it's called Oshima. It's not so Oshima. Okay. Uh, so, bravo. Well done, let's hear it for him. Anyone else? And Oshima-san draws the early designs for Sonic on a napkin. And that's kind of where Sonic is born, right? They call him Mr. Needle Mouse. Um, and so then he gets his buddy, Yuji Naka, right? There you go. Yuji Naka is a programmer, and, and it's funny because Yuji Naka is often referenced as the father of Sonic, right? But alone, Sonic would have never been created if it was just Yuji Naka there. It's important to note that when you look at the history of Sonic, there's really never one person that you can credit anything to as the father of Sonic, as the mother of Sonic. It was a team, a team effort, and not just within Japan, but also across Japan, Europe, and America. And we'll talk about that next. So, one part of Green Hill Zone gave Naka-san a lot of trouble when he was programming it. Yeah, right here. What's that? The loop. Yep, the loop de is correct from Bravo. Bravo. So much faster than Mario that when Sonic was initially going through the loop, he would break the physics and he would run right through it. Like, <laughs> break right through it. And they're like, oh, it's not supposed to do that. So that was, that was a big thing for them. And it's funny because like, you spend, what, a second going through that loop? Yeah. But think about how iconic it is in your memory, right? And, and realize that the reason for that is because no other game had done anything to that level in 1991 when Sonic the Hedgehog came out. And so that was one of the things that really set that game apart. Aside from the amazing music, right? Aside from the amazing graphics at the time, it was the way the game was built. And Sonic kind of encapsulates, in, in my opinion, um, and granted I am biased as a Sonic fan and a at Sega, but it encapsulates really all of those elements coming together perfectly at once, right? So, this is what Sonic 1 looked like. We all know that Sonic is born. Uh, and as we go through, though, there were a number of different things that had to change about Sonic, right? In America. Did you guys know that he actually looked different in Europe? Just a little bit? Yeah. yeah. And he looked different in Japan, too. Now, we call this Classic Sonic. He's called Classic Sonic for a few reasons. The internet will tell you it's because he has black eyes, and he's got a little chubby stomach, right? And he's a bit shorter, and he doesn't really have voice acting yet. Although he did, technically. We'll get into that. Right? Um, so, as we go forward, let me show you. Here we go. Check this out. Here's a good example of the differences between Sonic's art in Japan and Europe versus the United States. And on the left, your lives might be if you've never picked up Sonic that fateful Christmas morning, or birthday morning, or whatever it may have been, Dude. it was Christmas for me. So Tom Kowinski, at this point, goes over the, to the, Japan the, the and he says, all right, uh, I have this idea. We're going to pack the Sonic the Hedgehog ran out of in every single and unit of Sega the Genesis TV shot. And he presents this <laughs> to the, the board of directors, right, at Sega Japan. And can you guys guess what they said then? No. 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 <laughs> That's about right. Uh, there was a lot of anger going on right now, and, and to be fair, the thought was, you're going to take our best game, the best game we've ever created, perhaps, and you're going to give it away for free? <laughs> Think about how much money we can make if we just sold the game ourselves, right? But Tom strategy, Tom Kulinski, at this point was thinking, if we show people what this game is about, they will instantly be hooked, right? They will buy Genesis just to get it, uh, and as history would prove, Tom was right. Um, the idea did not go over well. In fact, something was kicked during that meeting. So Tom's in there, he, he pitches the idea, and the exec's like, no, absolutely, we think this is a terrible idea. Something gets kicked, anyone got a guess? Yeah, right here. A chair? It was a chair, yeah. <laughs> well done, well done. It was a chair. But the other meeting, the guy that had hired Tom Kulinski, that actually found him on a beach initially to hire him, again, reference console wars here, worth reading, um, said, all right, listen, Tom, not a single person in this room agrees with anything that you have said today. But I hired you for a reason, and I'm going to trust you to make this work. 
And so Tom goes back to the US, and guess what happens? Sonic gets packed in with the Sega Genesis, right? So, uh, Sega takes a risk and it pays off. Sonic becomes one of the best selling games in history, and Sega Genesis spikes. Sega has a tiny little portion of the market share at this point, and suddenly so it doubles, it triples. Um, it's time then for a new character to be in Sonic 2. In, in the back, I see someone holding up a wrench. Is that. That's correct, I heard Miles. Let's hear it for him. Miles, Miles go. Miles go. Miles per hour. <laughs> Did you guys know that, that, um, that Tails actually dies in Sonic Boom? What? 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 <laughs> Actually, I probably wasn't supposed to reveal that. Um, you guys have seen that scene in Wicker Man, right? Oh With Nicolas Cage and the Beats. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like that. But we might just cut the whole thing due to the ESRB restrictions, so no, don't worry, Tails fans. He, he may survive it. Maybe. Yeah. Please don't hit me if Tails dies in Sonic Boom. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> hey, there he is. It's Tails. Let's hear it for Tails. <laughs> Everybody loves Tails. Right? And Sonic 2 also has this awesome co-op mode. How many of you guys play co-op mode with your sibling? Right? Like, half the room at least. Those of you that, that didn't get the opportunity, don't worry, you can get it right now on digital console, or like PS3, or Xbox, or the Wii, you should do it, because you have that memory. Also, the great part is that Tails never dies. Tails uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Also, laughs> we, we would reference this later. Did you guys ever play Sonic Generations? So, you know in Sonic Generations, when you get to come up with plant zone, and Tails makes these comments about how the water, the water, the pink water makes him a little bit nervous? <laughs> right? He's like, I don't know, all of a sudden that pink water makes me a little nervous. That was a little Easter egg reference that we threw in to, to reference Sonic 2, because in Sonic 2, Tails is one second behind you, right? And so you jump onto that moving platform, and it carries you across the water, and Tails, poor Tails. <laughs> <laughs> Tails is one second later, so he jumps, misses the platform, goes right into the water, sinks, dies. Every time. <laughs> poor Tails, he just dies, and dies, and dies. And so we're like, we kind of want to have this, this little joke that there's been like, he's had this scarred memory where he, <laughs> and he sees the water and he just is like, oh, like he feels this apprehension towards the water after all these years. Um, so we hope you guys enjoy that line. If you didn't already recognize it, go back and play it. You'll, you'll see that. So we introduced Tatoids. We also introduced the seven Chaos Emeralds. If you get all seven emeralds and fifty rings, what happens, guys? Super Sonic. Super, Super, Super Sonic. Sonic. Okay, yes, Super, Super Sonic. Super Sonic is correct. Yes. Looks a bit like that. Let's hear for Super Sonic. Which state do 
you guys make fun of, a lot of you said Alabama. When we were in Alabama three months ago, do you know who their favorite character was? Shadow. Yeah. Amy <laughs> said something. It was Shadow, actually. They like Shadow too, so you guys gotta watch out. They make fun of them. They like Shadow just as much as you. <laughs> but what's interesting there is that everyone really, really likes Shadow, but if I were to ask you, did you, did you really enjoy the game Shadow the Hedgehog, or did you prefer no. Sonic Adventure 2, which way would you go? Sonic Adventure 2. Sonic the Tales are back, they meet this new guy called Knuckles. And at this point, at this point in time, in 1993, two people join the Sonic team. These people will go on to become very, very influential and still are to this day. Do you know what their names are? Anyone name them? Right here in the chat. Jude Sonoy. Jude Sonoy is one of them. Let's hear it more. Welcome. Yeah. You, guys, you guys know the theme song of Sonic Adventure? Yeah. Right? And Sonic Adventure 2, Open Your Heart, Live and Learn. Jude Sonoy is the guitarist. Yeah. Right there. So, yeah. yeah. There's, there's a connection, right? This is what he joins. He does some music for Sonic 3. There's also one other guy that's joining. Right here. No. <laughs> uh, no, Michael Jackson was never on Sonic 2. Call me old Tanny? If I pronounce it easy. Uh, no. Not, not Tommy. Okay, now I've got those. Yep. Uh, Takashi, te Takashi Yuda? There is Takashi Izuka. Is yes, yes. Let's hear it for a moment. Takashi Izuka joins the team, or joins the brawl, if you will. And at that point, uh, we, you, don't, you wouldn't know it yet, but the guy that created Sonic Colors, no one likes Sonic Colors? Yeah. So th these guys join the team. At this point, no one has any idea what the big impact, how large they will have in the future. So. Let's talk again about boxes. Oh no. So check it out guys. Uh, on the left, the picture of the US box art. On the right, the picture of the European box art. Now, it's maybe not fitting for me to dock European box art in this case, but I really am curious as to what Knuckles is doing there. <laughs> like, what's what's going on with his face? And why is Sonic holding up too many fingers? <laughs> He's showing up German 3. I like to guess German 3, right? German 3. If, if you've watched uh, Inglorious, yeah. Yeah. Um, what's interesting here is that I almost like to reference this as like the European version was really just Sonic 4. Uh, but that was not to be. So let me come out with Sonic and Knuckles. Ah, uh, Sonic and Knuckles. Do you guys know that actually Sonic and Knuckles and Sonic 3 were supposed to be the same game? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And the marketing guys were like, uh, so listen, we need to release a game this fall. And this, the team guys were like, so uh, the game's not going to be done. And they said, well, what if we just kind of like make it its own thing? If you flush it out a little bit more, then cut it in half, and then release the rest later. So I said, oh, okay. So that's why Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles ended up being such a huge project, because it was actually two games that were initially supposed to be one. And that's why you get that lovely, that lovely technology. You guys know what it's called, right? Lock on technology. Did you guys see the commercial with Santa's elves? Yeah. yeah. And they're talking about how they pitched the, the lock on technology to Santa, and he was like, no way, man, no one's gonna like that. So they went and sold it to Sega, and now they're rich and they're living in this mansion, and they have this <laughs> beautiful women attending them. It's a really good commercial. So, you've got two games, which means you have double the emeralds. If you get all 14 emeralds, what happens to Sonic uh, in the back in the black shirt? Yep. Uh, it's Hypersonic. Hypersonic, is he right? Yeah. 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 And that's what Hypersonic looks like. Now let's give a pop around of applause now. <laughs> and that is what Hypersonic looks like. Now I've slowed down the animation just a little bit. Those of you that got Hypersonic, I know he flashes a lot faster. So let's do one more question. Places that Sonic have shown up in the 90s. Where would we see Boucher? Comics. Comics, yeah. Has anyone read the Archie comics? Yeah. Depends. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Depends. Excellent. Well, you guys are going to like a surprise a bit later. Um, let's see here. Other places that Sonic show up in the Cartoons. Right here. Cartoon shows. Cartoon shows. Anyone, anyone watch the cartoon shows? 
two, two, if he, if he uh, uh, the uh, uh, Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, here we go. There was the serious Sonic the Hedgehog, Saturday morning, as we call it. It was also the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, which was more comedic slapstick show. And then there was technically a third one that I would pretend to have happened. <laughs> <Sonic. laughs>
Uh, yes, there we go. Okay. So jumping forward. Anyone know? Guys, for just a second here. The reason I'm going to record these is because I like taking videos of these panels and getting them back to set up. We need the and challenge. Showing the people. We need the challenge. Check this out. And one of the things that I think is really cool, I think it'd be cool someday, is to challenge. I don't know. Personally. Yeah. Yeah. But I'd like to find out how many people are also interested in that so I can show that to people. I'd love to see challenge. I'm going to record you guys on three or minute. I want to hear you cheer, okay? I'm going to show this to folks to say. So, people that love the challenge, Let's 
take it, and I tell you, your question was, any more Knuckles raps, right? No Knuckles raps that I've heard of in the near future, so. Yeah, um, he's a fighter for Knuckles. I'm, I'm, I'm trying, it's, it's coming back to me now. Um, so next time you want to take a dive at Aquatic Mine. <laughs> makes you want to sit back and enjoy the ride. Okay, uh, let's take another question on the left side. It's a great point. Technically, yes. Sega had a group called STI, the Sega Technical Institute, and they worked in California. That was actually where Yuji Naka was at at the time. So yes, technically, but again, it was a Japanese-focused uh, development team. It, it was like a mix of Japan and the West, but that's a great point. I'm glad you brought it up. Let's take a look at the back of the room. You're holding something square up. I can't believe it is. Yes, with the white. <laughs> Yeah, so I think the things that, that led us, and I can't speak for the entire company here, but I can tell you from, from personal what I've seen, um, some of the things that led us to that new design for Sonic, right, is that every, every so often you decide, it's kind of like we, we need to try and find a way to make the character evolve a little bit with the time. So we did it in 1999, um, and we did it again with Sonic Boom. And it's worth noting that just because Sonic Boom exists doesn't mean that the other Sonic is gone, right? We've, we've made that point. But want to make it again, the existing Sonic design has not been replaced in this sense. So that's the first thing I'll say. In terms of reaction, what I found, actually, let me just pull you guys first. I don't want to, I don't want to like change the way this might go. When, when you guys first saw Sonic Boom, how many of you were a little bit concerned about the character design for a lot of the characters? This is raising hands, right? Very concerned. Okay, yeah. As expected, we knew that would be the case because any time that you change something, that people really love, some of the people have grown up with, something that people have seen for so many, for so many years, there's a natural apprehension there, right? And you're like, oh, this is something that I'm comfortable with, and you're changing it, and I'm therefore not comfortable with it. But, here's the follow-up <laughs> question. How many of you guys, after a while, started looking at the side of signs and going, actually, you know, that might be pretty cool. I think Except for the bit. Except for the bit. For example, what do you guys think about, about Amy becoming a much stronger female? I, yes. 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 There, there's a lot of little things that have changed in this new branch of the universe, and I think the fans are really going to appreciate and enjoy. The Amy change person is one that I'm so pleased to see, because she's no longer like the damsel in distress all the time. Right? <laughs> yes. So that's, that's a great question. The, the answer is very much what you just saw. In the beginning, everyone says, oh my gosh, you changed my favorite characters. I hate you, Sega. I hate you so much. And then after a while, I was like, oh, actually, you know, I think the scarf might be okay. Or, you know, I really like the new changes to Amy. Or, I, I kind of like the Tails has and stuff to show he's a tinker and he's really smart now. Um, so that, that's kind of the way it's gone. And I think as people play the game and see the show, that will get even better. Let's take another question. In Sonic CD, when you can go to the sound test, you enter a secret code, it takes you to a, a, a really creepy thing. It's a really creepy yeah. song. That uh, translates into like Play Forever with Sega Enterprises. Yeah. Where did the idea of that distorted sonic come from? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but did you guys know that there was this game called Sonic R for the Sega 7? Yeah. 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 People laugh about this curse, right? There's, there's something called the Tails Doll Curse. And I just want to warn you guys officially, as someone who has seen at least, at least five of our new employees that say it disappear because of this curse. <laughs> if you play Can You Feel the Sunshine backwards in the dark while repeating Tails Doll, Tails Doll, Tails Doll <laughs> in front of a mirror, Stuff will happen, alright? Do not mess around with this. <laughs> alright, that's just all I wanted to say. We've lost way too many interns, and I hate paperwork. It's always been. <laughs> so, let's take a question over there. Your hands up, yeah. Yeah, uh, this isn't about Sonic or anything, but it is Sega related. I'm a huge fan of the Shenmue series. Uh, so, I'm just wondering, is there, there going to be a Shenmue 3? Here's what I want you to do. Okay. We have a Sega panel tonight. I would like for you to come to my Sega panel tonight. But here's what I'm going to tell you at the same panel. I don't have any games on any game Shenmue related. But I played and beat both of the games. They're fantastic games. So, Woo! that's what I'll say. 
Uh, let's take another question. Ideally, Sonic related, we do have a second panel tonight, as I mentioned, so please feel free to bring your second questions there. Any and all of them. Right here. Thank you. Yep. Okay. I am actually looking forward to Sonic Boom. Now, I noticed that you changed the voice actor for Sonic to Roger Craig Smith. Like, it's, it's, it's been that way. It's been, it's been, uh, yeah, I noticed from like a few years ago. Why? Mm -hmm. Where's so, Ryan Drummond? Oh, okay. Uh, okay. All right. I know where this is going. I know where this is going. Okay. That, that is a fun situation that I try not to get involved with. Everyone has their own, their own like, sonic voices that they prefer, right? Um, and I think it's good to respect that. It was, it was a choice where uh, the team at Sega said, this is kind of the voice we want for this, this direction for Sonic moving forward. That's not something that I'm a part of. Um, but my understanding is, it's like, why would, why would you change any voice for any character, right? I remember because you, you want to take the character in a new direction that you feel that the new voice actor can really deliver. That's, that's the generic answer. It's probably not as specific as you were hoping for, I know. Um, I don't know that you'll, you'll see, you know, your favorite voice actors again. I can't really comment on that. That's up to our production teams. But we do understand there's a lot of fans out there for many of the old voice actors, too. We appreciate that. Julia White for Best Sonic! <laughs> Julia White. How many of you guys like Julia White as Sonic? I know I did an excellent job for this one. Uh, right here. Yep. Yep. What's the sports tape? What's the sports tape, right? Why does it look like a mummy is kind of the question. <laughs> Uh, that, yeah, that is one of the new, the new character design choices. It's, it's meant to, to show a few things. I think part of it is sort of the, the athletic look and feel that Sonic should have. Um, part of it is that we really love movies at Sega. Love <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but it's primarily the, the first point, which is to show a bit of that the more action. You, you look at him and you go, oh, I, I get that he's a character that, that is very athletic and does a lot of the sort of Parkour. stuff. That's where the scarf came from. All right, let's take another question. In the back, you're jumping up and seeing you got hat. What happens if Lady Switch hat? Yeah, that's a good question. It is. Yeah. Blaze, I thought, was actually a really great example of a powerful female character when she was first introduced. Um, no news on Blaze, but I'm glad you asked that question. So I'll mention to some people that, uh, that we have some, some Blaze fans in the house here. Got a few. Ten minutes. Let's, right here, yeah. They try. Ah, gotcha. So, so the question was, will we ever see some of the Archie comic characters in the games? Um, now, technically, that did happen once. Do you guys know what game that was? Sonic Fighters. Sonic. Fighters, kind of. Oh, it was Spinball. There we go. Spinball. That's what I was looking for. Actually, some of the characters from a comic showed up in, in Sonic Spinball. That was one of the only times we've seen, seen in the past. Um, will you see in the future? Couldn't really say. That's one of the ones that's going to be up in the air, and, and maybe they will, maybe they won't, I don't know. So, but, but for the time being, they kind of exist separately. Let's say one more question, and we're going to wrap up. Yep. Let's go... Okay, so, so in the way in the back that I have probably missed out and haven't called on yet. I see, I see your hand up, sir. Yep. Yep. You want to stand up? Oh, uh, sure. That'll do. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Freedom Fighters game from Suzanne, will the Archie Comics transition into the new Sonic Boom series? Or will they be reintroduced? Um, not, not to my knowledge. Um, but again, that's a question that you'll have to kind of wait and see. We'll talk more about Sonic Boom at E3. Alright, that's all the questions we have. Before we wrap up, I have one last surprise for you guys. Alright. So, what's next for Sonic Boom? Oh, come on. So if you guys promise me you're not going to tell anyone, then I will share a secret with you. That I know how the internet works, I know how Twitter works, how Facebook works, and I don't want to lose my job, guys. So you guys have to, to solemnly swear to me that you are not going to tell a soul about what I'm about to tell you. Do you swear? I swear! I swear! I swear! I swear! I swear! I see a couple people that have not promised yet. Okay, thank you. Alright. I swear. I just gotta be careful, guys. Alright, so. Now my cousins, uncles, friends, roommates, brothers, sister, knows a guy who works at Sonic Team. He passed me this info straight, so I know it's legit. So you guys ready? 
<laughs> the next Sonic game, guys, the next Sonic game is going to be... There it is! It goes to the all Sega! Sega.